Hi, again. <laughs> um, thank you for being with us today. We're obviously very happy to have you join this workshop as part of If a Tree Falls in the Forest online program, which started in January this year with artist Gian Spina and then carried on with the contribution from Yasmin Ben Abdullah in February. Um, you can still explore both of their contribution on our website if you wish. Um, this month, we're very excited to shift the format a bit and to explore with Cindy Sisoko and Fabian Villegas uh, the workshop format and which they chose to do as to reply to our research program. Very briefly to introduce this program, If a Tree Falls in a Forest is a research project designed to explore topics of perception, representation and knowledge in African photography developed as a work in the progress in, within the framework of the curatorial research grant Les Rencontres d'Art l'Institut Français Africa projects. This research is carried out on two phases. The first one is an online program where we invite our collaborators to respond to the questions that we raise in our research. And then the second part is a collective show displayed at Les Rencontres d'Arles in 2022. Hi, Cindy. Thank you so much for your offering. And uh, the, the floor, the Zoom floor is all yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Suki. Um, and super happy to, to be doing this workshop online, to be part of the program as well. Um, so thank you for joining. And hopefully we have a few peeps joining now. Hey, Fabian. <laughs> um, so just to introduce myself, so I'm Cindy Sissoko and I'm an independent curator and writer, but also work within an institution called the New Art Exchange in Nottingham in the UK, and where I'm a curator and a special projects producer. And my research interests, let's say, in my focus in my work is very much around different aspects of decoloniality within um, the art sector and the idea and question of culture as well. And also very much around cultural production, knowledge production, um, from racialized epistemologies um, slash the global south as well. So this is a little bit about me. Uh, and now I would love to maybe hear maybe one minute uh, about yourself if you want to introduce yourself to very briefly and, and we can start uh, the workshop. Maybe let's start with Miriam. We can go like around my screen. Hi, my name is Miriam. Um, I am a, a curator and film programmer based in Glasgow. Um, I mostly curate like artist moving image work, but sometimes um, my work floats between other things too. Um, yeah, I previously worked for Africa in Motion, which is an African film festival that takes place in Scotland each year. Um, and I cur currently work for Berwick Film and Media Arts Festival as an associate programmer. Thank you. And Teresa? Um, hello, uh, my name is Teresa. I am uh, calling in from London. I'm originally from Slovakia and I'm an artist working with photography and recently also ventured into um, moving image. And yeah, um, I am throughout this pandemic have completely embraced this digital uh, wealth of knowledge and I'm very grateful to be learning tonight as well. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Ibra? Hello, can you hear me? Do you hear me? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, sorry, because every time i speak people are like they struggle to hear me uh, so my name is ibrahim uh, i was born in france i grew up in france my family is from the gambia and i lived in london for the past seven years until last summer i would say uh yeah backgrounds in the media and music industry and then i trained as a curator, but I don't work as a curator. Uh, I'm interested in, let's say, education and art generally, or just creativity, and uh, how 
yeah, these disciplines can address um, issues of welfare, yeah, to put it simply. Um, yeah, that's me. Perfect. Thank you. And Claire? Um, hi, I'm Claire. I am based in Cape Town in South Africa. Um, at the moment, I'm working as a kind of independent curator researcher, and I also um, dabble in art and photography and scent perfume making, um, my current project anyways. And yeah, I guess I'm here today more as a, a listener and a researcher. Um, I've, I did a master's in, in photography and looked particularly at photo photographic histories um, of the African continent and the kind of legacies of colonial imagery that still are embedded in photography today. So yeah, this is really exciting. So thank you for this. Thank you, Herb. Hello, um, my name's Herb. I am zooming in from London, but I'm originally from the US, from Philadelphia, um, and I am a film programmer and writer and curator. Um, work, um, have worked for the past couple of years on Barrick Film and Media Arts Festival with Miriam. Um, also recently started working on um, Sheffield Docfest as arts program curator with Sukena, so some good connections in this room. Um, I think I'm really motivated, um, yeah, by the meeting places between cinema and contemporary art, um, quite motivated by like the new and what's happening now, but also like global film histories um, is something I spend a lot of time researching as well, so. Brilliant, thank you, Fabian. Hey, my name is uh, Fabian Villegas. I'm from uh, Mexico, but I now live in Dominican Republic. Uh, I will be with all of you in the next uh, session of the next week. And I'm a writer, I'm a researcher, and I'm really interested in um, racialized epistemologies and anti-colonial narratives. Perfect, thank you. I don't think Elam will necessarily say a few words. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Uh, brilliant. Okay. I'll try my video, my internet is also. Hi, nice uh, to meet you all. Um, sorry, I'm gonna be a bit passive because I have a little person running in and out and she's very distra distracting. Yeah. Um, I'm London-based uh, film uh, producer. I've made mainly documentaries um, that sit in a kind of the personal and political space, I guess. Um, and also a curator working both independently um, but also with London Film Festival over the last seven years, I think, um, on films from the Middle East, North Africa, the Gulf and Iran, that really broad region that necessitates just one person. Um, <laughs> and also Shabak, the Festival of Contemporary Arab Culture. Um, and um, I write a lot as well. And also just in, in preparation for this session, I kind of came to the film world via photography it was really the space that um, I worked in initially, more co-creative work. And I, um, yeah, so it's been really interesting to think back about film through that perspective. So I'm really interested to see what this space will open up. Perfect, thank you so much. And Yvon, I don't know if you want to say a few words, Yvon being the second half of Untitled with Sukena. Yeah, because Yvonne missed the introduction earlier. I briefly spoke about the project, but maybe you can add up a few words. Hi. Hi, hi. Um, I mean, I mean I, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Uh, I should be normally on the other side of the screen with Sofiana, but I cannot. Uh, I didn't have the time, the, the, the time to cross the city. To make it on time, my name is Yvonne Lange, and then I have the pleasure to work with Sofiana on on setting up this project, and I'm very happy that we are um, all here together. Um, I would like to thank uh, all of you, Sukena, and as well, especially Cindy, for you know leading uh, this particular session. So I wouldn't say more, and uh, enjoy it. <laughs> I'll be in the background. Thank you. Thank you so much, both. Thanks. Uh, and thank you for the introductions as well. So I think we can start the workshop. Um, so as a response to if a, fall, if a tree falls in a forest, 
um, that focuses on perceptions and representation of photography in Africa, I decided to take a, a take and a, a focus on the viewer um, specifically. So the subject, the location of the subject, but specifically the viewer and to kind of frame it under this idea of uh, and the concept of citizenship specifically um, being a question that I don't necessarily that I've been kind of thinking myself but also not necessarily encountering so much within that field uh, let's say um, obviously I've shared some materials with you with Azule who's very very much focuses on that question um, so yes this is kind of like the focus a bit of the of the workshops um, of this month kind of theme, um, but specifically this idea of the viewer and this idea of the subject within photography. So I responded to the program by questioning very specifically how the medium of photography has allowed um, for um, like the exclusion of certain narratives, but also um, the perpetration of colonial representation within it. So through ethnographic images, but also within archives that we hold today, within institutions, but also within ourselves in our imaginaries around photography or like the imaginaries that are created within photography as well. So I personally have like a bit of a kind of not controversial, but like a, a tension, let's say, with uh, the idea of photography, firstly, um, because of its history and because of um, the kind of like systemic violence that you can find within um, photography, especially considering myself as a black woman and seeing what that actually meant, you know, in creating those ideas and these imaginaries around it as well, what that actually meant, what that actually kind of represented really. Um, and on the other side also, there's that possibility to subvert the medium very much in creating different narratives and using it as a tool to denunciate as well as um, creating new realities, alternative realities, different formats and narratives within it. So photography is very much something that overwhelms us every day and that keeps being produced and is, has been produced, you know, for a very long time. Um, and I was believing that, you know, the focus on the viewer very much was to also adopt the tools and that rejoins with the materials that I've shared, um, to adopt the tools and to have like a, bit a pedagogical approach but some materials for a critical reading of photography and those tools and these readings to allow for to question agency but also power and also like racial and national privilege within the medium um, and at its core so i was referring to this idea of political and emotional responsibility um, kind of catching yourself when perceiving photography and kind of seeing and being responsible for the thoughts and feelings that were coming out in that moment as well. So the objective of that workshop and the idea behind it is very much to frame um, or allow for the frame of the citizen in relation to the medium through an introduction with Azule in camp and very briefly with Rankin as well, just to contextualize a little bit what actually, what are the different stories that are told around this idea of citizenship um, but also to have, to kind of think about it together, this is a starting point. Um, and imagining maybe methodologies and tools around a different reading of photography. Um, so this being very much in like the present moment, but how can these tools be actually articulated for future, um, yeah, future narratives, future ways of, of seeing and reading it, uh, but also of producing it. So firstly, I was thinking that those tools so are the materials, um, but also having a self-reflection more with the question that I've kind of asked you to think about um, more as like a kind of personal encounter with the subject. It might be the first time or not to think about it in this way or in this frame and to kind of see so how to articulate that gaze, you know, the methodology being this articulation of this collective gaze. Um, and secondly, I mentioned, I mean, it was mentioned in the brief, the idea of having a bit of a collective text and how the workshop itself, how this conversation could be taken into, it's an invitation, <laughs> an invitation to contribute to a text that will be sharing and archiving and, and, and um, yeah, kind of be published to, to, to bring it, you know, post that workshop. So this is a proposition, this is a, an invitation um, that will be put towards um, all of you. So this is like the kind of, yeah, the two points in the way that I was articulating and thinking about 
the formats to to talk about uh, citizenship and photography um, in this program. So talking about the little question, I was wondering if anyone wanted to share maybe like a reflection that they've been thinking about in relation to how as photography knowledge, but also um, kind of articulating ideas, you know, around like a specific conflict or politics, identity, culture, etc. Um, and whether you had a, 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 a visual to share in relation to that. I'm already kind of putting the ball on you. <laughs> and yeah, you're more than welcome to, to share or not. And I can also share my example uh, first, uh, if you want. Anyone? Maybe you can start. And then Maybe you can start. <laughs> I will start. Let me share my screen. Uh, I'm using the platform Miro, uh, which has been really incredible. Okay, that's already on my example. That's perfect. Um, so my example was uh, my encounter with the work of Mohamed Bourouissa, a French-Algerian uh, photographer, which is currently based in Paris. Uh, and this, I mean, I was, I was very much kind of thinking of, yeah, as I said, sorry, my encounter with my, myself, I guess, my own reality of uh, growing up in the suburbs in Paris and actually seeing this reality within his work and within the photographic um, practice that he's kind of adopting. So his practice has shifted, um, I would say, the past few years. Uh, photography is like very much part of his education, artistic education, but has shifted more in installation and, and film as well, uh, more recently, uh, including sound as well. But these works are quite like early series of works where when seeing them for the first time it was very much as I said my own reality but also create the fact that it was the space within contemporary art For narratives, for histories, for represent doesn't get seen, uh, but also that is in some way part of this politics of exclusion within the French Republic. So, um, an age of those narratives, and also some al, uh, which are different portraits of, of uh, individuals in Paris, where a lot of young space that just kind of carve different. Um, let's say like a space of freedom, basically a space for like dissidents, a space of a fashion and and things. Classical paintings, for example, such as. De la Croix and Francisco Goya as well. So, as you can see, this is like very much stage photography, but uh, like completely subverted and taken over by the ones that are concept of what we call like Frenchness. It's a work that I feel like very close to, a space that is creating within contemporary photography practices, I mean, invisibility, but and shown and shows visibility and exclusion is how this has allowed me to kind of reveal uh, and give like a, let's say, not an alternative way of seeing citizenship from um, the people that have represented within his work, but very much giving, um, yeah, carving a space and, and giving like a different, a different narrative of it and a subversion of it in some respect too. So this is my take. I don't know if someone wanted to share their um, example. Uh, 
Well, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I don't have a specific example to show. Maybe I misread the email and the instructions, but um, it, I saw an exhibition from here from him last year or the mm -hmm. year before in Paris. Nice. And uh, when I'm looking at it, I was thinking, how, yeah, how timely is it for? gallery space to use these images and like you said at the end or in, actually at the beginning of your presentation that these images are sort of representing a certain um, fringe of the population but they can also be taken as almost like a mm. fashion show or something because now this sort of imagery and all the the, the, the sort of The composition of these images have been uh, hugely appropriated by, by brands. And you see kids wearing Lacoste or Adidas or whatnot. This is what brands are doing now. And I wonder um, if when seeing these images right now, uh, people would be able to see anything more than um, Yeah, then, then these cultural signifiers, basically, which have lost um, their original claims, you know. Uh, now it's cool to look like that, or it's cool to look anti or anti, whatever. But people forget about the message almost. You know? mm. People forget about the message, but they also forget that, you know, this kind of like, yeah, this, I guess this, um, sorry, let's start again. People forget about the message, but they also forget, and this is a way of almost like dissimulating a, as I said, like talking about exclusion, talking about, um, and to relate it to citizenship, like what it means to be, you know, a, a French citizen, what it means to be like kind of representing this within those narratives as well, you know, um, yeah. I mean, me, uh, either I didn't read this maybe somewhere. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was like just on the spot, uh, one of uh, the artists that I was lucky to meet while studying at the Royal College um, of Art was Larry Achenponk, mm -hmm. and he is British. Um, Gambian artist and he made these works where he uh, sorry Gambian I'm I'm influenced by him um uh Ghanian Ghan yeah. um, and yeah he used these works of family photo family archive and then um um, I mean, I could try to I could try to share my screen quickly and search for it, or should I just describe it? Probably that would be better. But yeah, using using a black um, um, square and then kind of substituting the face um, of the of the family photographs of the archive, and again, like questioning the the idea of of representation and of ownership of one's face even like ownership of one one identity and um yeah i i feel like i, I if, if if i knew i would i would prefer pre prefer better but i know that his work really works with this idea of um of the hyphenated nationality of that is so very much more um versed in american um diaspora as opposed to british diaspora and like um, and it's like one of his works was actually uh, transforming uh, under London Underground, uh, Westminster Station, with with um, with the with the colours, uh, Pan African colours, and like yeah, something so British, so, such a symbol of Britishness, then was taken um, a very different very powerful symbolic message um, mm. through 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 the chain mm. yeah 
yeah well, well the kind of reclaiming of that you know the reclaiming of like kind of britishness like values and the same level than uh what we saw in photos as well of reclaiming like the french flag and reclaiming classical paintings that are just not representing you know the people that are like the subjects of this photo totally um yeah that's a really good example actually yes thank you I was also just thinking, thinking about like that work, and then it made me think about, or think about like Larry Chimpong's work, um, and like who he's photographing, and like I think also that thing of like where, yeah, where these photographs are like displayed, and like kind of what like the purpose of that is. And I was thinking of like those um, that exhibition that was at Tate Britain of like Steve McQueen's mm -hmm. work. Of, like, year three and he like photographed all these children um yeah I guess it just made me think of this thing of like what not like what what the purpose of that is but like what what it means for for an artist to like elevate something that's I guess kind of like quite mundane and like personal and then for that to be put in like a a national gallery for example like how does that change like what, yeah, I guess it's the thing of like what I think um, it was in one of the readings about like kind of these like mundane images. I think in the Tina Camp or maybe in the podcast, she's talking about these like mundane images of like passport photos or whatever. And I was kind of, it made me think of that like Stephen Queen work. Mm -hmm. And were you, sorry, were you relating it? Um, how are you relating it? Sorry, the mundane images and this idea of, of my queen. This thing of like, of like almost like there's, there's like, playing with like there, there's different ways to like play with this idea of the mundane and like in some ways you can like elevate it and make it like something kind of like more special and like what does that mean for for the images and also for the people who are like the subjects of those portraits um and for the people who are like viewing them you know like what does that do for you know the demographic of uh, a gallery space or something yeah, absolutely. Yeah. These pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely this idea of spectatorship behind it as well, especially bringing it within those spaces. And I mean, exhibition in itself, you know, um, if you take that word and if you take that concept in relation to the identities within those spaces, is can be quite problematic. Um, definitely. Yeah. Anyone else? I had. Um like a bit of a different way of thinking about it maybe or i yeah, don't know um, but it also came from actually i really enjoyed the podcast with um tina camp um it like uh it was a it was a good way for me to absorb that information um and she talks a lot about like um how especially like the identification photos or like these other types of photos are like things that are handled and touched and like passed around and I think about like um photography that I might have like in my own like room and like house and like so this is just like a mm -hmm. photo of me and like I stick it on my wall or whatever or, like this is a photo of um like that I literally took inside of a cinema of like the screen of a cinema and it just yes. came out somehow really beautifully and like mm -hmm. this is a photo that my friend took and I like a lot but or and then something like this which is just like found from the 1940s but I think like the thing I actually wanted to talk about was like sort of how objects can mm -hmm. be photos and how they can be um actually referring us to like the specific like situation and circumstance of how we think of a photo like capturing a snapshot of time because like for me this is like a little ticket that you get on the bus in Ukraine. Um, I was there in 2013 and it makes me think about like the time that I was there so like literally when I stick this on my wall like it's it's like bringing back that memory in the same way that like taking a photograph on the street there is and I think about the food that I ate then I think about like the films that I watched I don't think about like actually I like had this like intense romance with the person when I was there um and I think about that or like um like this which is like a burned in half dollar bill 
by mm -hmm. um, uh, someone at a film festival in Lithuania, actually a Native American filmmaker called Adam Khalil. Um, and uh, it was like late at night and I don't know, they were like talking about, you know, um, just like, uh, or, or, or they being Adam and his brother Zach, who were like filmmakers who have a collaborative practice and um, just like about um, and how their filmmaking like pushes back on that and he literally like took a dollar bill out of his wallet and burned it in half and I don't know I just like kept the other half and it makes me think about that particular snapshot of that moment and I guess I was just thinking about these objects as like functionally or definitionally kind of like the same as photographs but maybe only to like one person or who you know whoever else was like there at that experience mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. and how how would you intersect those ideas with citizenship for example like those materials and those images that you have what's well, i mean they actually are quite like civic um things one yeah. is a public public bus um you know bus ticket and one is like a, a dollar bill which is no longer a dollar bill um mm -hmm. and i guess maybe that is something yeah i hadn't really thought about like that dimension of it but maybe like the sort of generality of those images is actually i think an interesting contrast to like how personal they make me make me feel yeah mm -hmm. because someone else could see that and be like i just throw that away you know that's the thing i get on the bus like who cares what do i care um, but like probably this was in 2013 they probably have different tickets now or maybe you know or who knows i don't know mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> thanks i think helen wanted to participate as well Oh yes, I, I went on a bit of a journey with her objects because I'm also a keeper and I have many, many. And so maybe it kind of segues into what I was wanted to say, which was I thought a lot about commodification um, around this, this question. And I think for me, I suppose photography or kind of being involved in creating images at the very beginning um, it kind of brought up lots of questions around commodification and, and did, you, did you need to present in a certain way or, or could, you only, could you only be validated with a certain type of visibility? And that speaks interestingly to the kind of idea of objects and citizenship and kind of how you are present and how you are visible, but only within certain types of frames. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think I, as I've, you know, I, I'm a film producer and I think it's a similar question, particularly within uh, uh, an industry that's so transactional um, and that wills itself to be creative, but actually is very commercial. Certainly where I sit is in a kind of difficult intersection of that. But with photography, I think um, it, it comes from a similar space. And I, I think a lot about being a mediator for a commodification process which benefits not necessarily the people who are being commodified, even if there is something to be gained from that process. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking a lot about the kinds of projects that will look to represent underrepresented voices, which is so, so often the case with kind of projects, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's where agency gets lost and misappropriated and so this was very much what i thought about which i think ties together a few different um things that have been said yes absolutely thank you so much claire did you want to share something as well um yeah i mean i i was just kind of reflecting on some of the ideas i've had in terms of my research which is very much along these lines of what a sort of thinking around what sort of strategies and what tools 
can be used in photography or using photography as a tool to kind of reclaim representation and rethink ways of, of being represented in, in this sort of popular media intersection of, of photography being used as kind of photojournalism or even fashion um, and then kind of intersect with that idea of reclaiming identity or reclaiming a kind of autonomous representation. Um, and there's a, a photographer who's a local to Cape Town called Hanim Christian and um, her work is, is very interesting in, in kind of the portrayal of, of people from her community and people um, from Cape Town who may have a certain kind of um, stereotype placed on them. Um, particularly in relation to kind of gang um, affiliation. Um, but her images are, are always very softly um, lit, very natural lighting, um, often very kind of romantic film photographs and often placed in very um, potentially subversive spaces of um, places where these people might not otherwise have been welcome previously or still aren't. Um, yeah, so I guess just sort of all of these conversations are really interesting to listen yeah, to. Yeah, totally. I mean, that totally rejoins like the example that I give um, mm. and what others have said as well. Totally. It would be amazing to see the visuals, actually. I don't know if you, um, can, if you have any. I can try share my screen. Um, well, actually, one image that I had up was actually from her Instagram story. I might need to share and then unshare and reshare. Um, so this was an Instagram story of an exhibition um, where some of her work was shown um, in Cape Town last year, I think. And it was just interesting to me going through her Instagram page that actually um, the, the actual like installation in an exhibition of her photographs isn't really something that she prioritizes on her feed. Um, I don't know if this is maybe just a complete tangent, but um it's interesting to me that for her visual kind of communication the the feed of the instagram page is more prominent or more important than the actual exhibition sort of installation mm -hmm. um and particularly this image um this is the the setting of this image is the mount nelson hotel which is a very very high and five-star hotel in Cape Town, kind of in the center of the city. And it's named after Lord Nelson or whoever, some general that was here in Cape Town at, at one point, still exists as a very kind of elitist institution and um, kind of very restricted in terms of who gets to go there. Um, but, it, you know, the kind of, I, I enjoy the kind of wide angle lens and again, the kind of soft film, and the playing of the colors. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, this is just one of the images. Brilliant, thank you. I mean, yes, as I said, it kind of really joins up with the examples that were given, but also how um, like racialized bodies can be, you know, how their space within, you know, this idea of citizenship really brings them into spaces that are just not necessarily like including, you know, in, um, to kind of go back to the including exclusion, but how are we creating different realities around that? Other representations that are really very much about creating those future spaces too, or allowing mm. to imagine those future spaces as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing. That's really great. And as a next um, kind of bit, I wanted to recap on the readings. I wanted to recap on the different texts that I gave you and that will then draw into questions, two main questions that I pose myself in relation to them. Um, creating a little bit of um, links between them and then that will be lead us to a little activity that I prepared. I feel like I'm talking to a classroom or something <laughs> but yeah I prepared an activity for people to work together and we are less than what I was thinking we would be so we were thinking of breakout rooms we were thinking of you know kind of sharing in different groups but maybe we can change a little bit today and it can be more of a an exercise of just having a little bit of time for yourself to think about the question um, that I will pose and then kind of sharing it together and reflecting on that um, and kind of see where we're going with it really. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of like the idea for the, the workshop. 
So I wanted to you know, give a bit of a brief um, about yeah, the materials. So firstly, sharing ranking, as I said, to contextualize this idea of citizenship. And I love her work, but unfortunately, this is also very much kind of American centered, once again, you know, the, uh, the African American experience within the US and the context. But there's many other references that are very inspiring to me that very much drew me into those questions too. But because of like French translation and not actually having the English translation, it wasn't necessary. I mean, it, I wasn't able to share them. Um, but there are works such as, oh, I can it. There are works such as, uh, Ibrahim, you might need to, to mute yourself. Sorry. Yes, thank you. Uh, so one of the references was from Mabula Sumahoro, for example, uh, who's a French um, Ivorian writer, as well as filmmakers as well that have done that work in those conversations, such as Alice Diop or um, Amandine Gay or Mame Fatounyang, and I can share those references. They very much articulate specifically the French experience uh, being as racialized woman uh, or black woman um, within that context and how that kind of draw different connections as well. Um, but yes, so these are kind of like others that I wanted to mention, but um, obviously, yeah, well, as I said, like kind of language uh, limitations here. But ranking was still very much, um, I mean, I think it's incredible in articulating those questions, but also taking them into like the poetry format um, of talking about this experience of the ones that are just not allowed to exist very simply in the context of the US. But this is very much something that is echoed um, in Europe or in the North, let's say, and beyond actually. So this was like a yeah idea of contextualizing that. Um, and then with the text of Azule and Camps, it was very much um, how they both kind of related with this idea of collective journey and agency and intimacy as well and responsibility with the photographic subjects um, in, um, I mean, as a viewer as well, ourselves as viewers, in how we can also trust and move forward together in order to kind of have these different critical readings of, of photography in general within different contexts, as we kind of referring a lot within the kind of like colonization situation between Israel and Palestine, and then camp being once again, very much in the context of the US too. Um, and also focusing very much on archive uh, materials as well. So Azule in a sense is kind of looking at photograph and focusing on photojournalism, um, captured and produced on the what she calls the regime made disaster. Um, and referring to the colonial context of Israel and Palestine, as I said, as a critical gaze to act upon it. And not only through a privileged spectatorship or like having kind of that distance from the privileged spectatorship, but also to see and recognize a disaster within photography and how also the nation states kind of allow also to create those narratives that are represented too. Um, so this is like a very brief kind of uh, highlight of her writings. And uh, because I'm not going to go on all of the details because we're not going to have necessarily time. Um, and then Camp on the other side, who's kind of giving or allowing almost as a method of how to listen to images, listening to images in the way that she refers to it is more this kind of like the sound and the vibration that the image is actually producing, referring to the frequencies in the different signs that the photograph is giving to the viewer. And how do we actually um, take those different frequencies, take those different signs as a way to contextualize the photography, but also um, kind of grasp the stories and the narratives that are within it as well. So this is like kind of two different perspectives, but they very much join themselves in the way that they're trying to articulate and think about how we collectively, you know, through the study of spectatorship and gaze can create different ways of seeing photography or at least deepening um, our knowledge or deepening stories behind the photography, whatever you can see um, within photojournalism, but also within contemporary photographic practices, which are subverting, but also very much kind of repeating some of those kind of colonial representations, but also, um, yeah, of just very much like just capturing and, and, and documenting um, events, let's say. 
so two perspectives that I think were very complementary and very much allowing to set a tone and as an opening, um, a lack of starts, let's say as well, um, to this idea of, of, I guess, changing, but also adapting how we perceive the medium um, and how we perceive also how we create those different, different spaces of representation as well. So from these two readings, um, there were like two key questions that I was kind of posing myself. So the first one being, how can we imagine a new idea of citizenship within the future of photography as an alternative reality, but also new temporality within photography, knowing that and kind of reflecting as well, for example, the use of ethnographic photography in the time that they were taken and how we actually at the time that the moment, the present moment that they were taken, how they were informing some ideas, informing some knowledge, but also informing certain context and systems that we are very much kind of living today, very much within the representation that they were giving, you know. Um, so it's, it's kind of thinking of the now, how the, the, the capture of photography now is informing future narratives, is informing future forms of uh, knowledge but also spaces to imagine again so it's how to kind of combine all of that how to almost anticipate um, different like future spaces of representation future spaces and future narratives around certain images um, and I guess also like my question and what I'm very interested in as well of racialized um, bodies but also knowledges within that um, photography so this is one <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not looking for questions to uh, for responses today, but it's kind of thinking about it together. Um, another one being, what do we imagine as well, and how can we like uh, kind of claim that you know those new representations too, um, and what does belonging actually means as well um, through the practice of photography as a way to like actively shift you know beyond the medium. Actually, are we thinking about photography as a category, can we think about it beyond this idea of image as well? Can photography basically live outside of this idea of, of image making as well? Um, these are big questions. I realize that definitely. Um, but basically where I'm trying to go with that, um, what's that? And the kind of aim of the workshop was to think about collectively the different methodologies and the tools um, that could allow us to respond to those questions and also how to construct like a new language around that, around those questions um, that could avoid reproducing what Azule talks about as a regime made image. Um, how do we, and she talks about that too in the, in the text, in the introduction that I provided was how do we imagine, how do we actually think about political imagination within making photography when we actually still within I mean, this kind of regime made disaster and representations as well. And this is where she also comes up with, we need like the return of the civil imagination, the actual individuals that comes collectively to imagine, you know, those different narratives that doesn't come within, you know, this idea of the nation state that is reproducing that, you know, appearing and disappearing within those representation, but kind of stepping out of that to create a space where we have a few, a pure agency um, over those um, repetition of like colonial representations or colonial kind of framework within the way that we see that. So this is one. <laughs> so how do we actually articulate the collective gaze? This is the question. How do we articulate this? Um, where do we take it? Uh, how do we really work around also avoiding the exclusion of certain narratives within photography and kind of building up on, yeah, on like this history of photography that hasn't, that hasn't included, um, yeah, all aspects of what we call like citizenship, all aspects of, um, of racialized epistemologies uh, within that medium and to be thought in like many different, um, many different like uh, subjects and themes, um, photojournalism, the contemporary photographic practices, uh, which can include like fashion photography as much as, you know, 
um, yeah, as much as I don't know, like a, an album cover, for example, or like advertising, you know, um, postcards and that kind of stuff. So this is the this is the question. These are the questions that I was thinking. We can think about it together, and this is where this, yeah, kind of like a collective entity is really important. I think. Um, I think so. Yeah, that that's. Uh, an introduction Ibrahim has something to share. Sorry, I think Ibrahim has something. To share. Perfect. Hello, hey, hey. you still hear me? Yes, well, uh, thank you for your the, what you just said. <laughs> I think, I uh, yeah, I'll, it's sort of sparked some thoughts that I had, but I don't know where I'm going with that. I'm just going to share and then whatever. But uh, I'm often quite conflicted with that um, question of representation mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we the status quo is that there is a historical misrepresentation of certain people. And now we get into a phase whereby representation is, as Elon was saying, is transactional. So I'm going to show you an aspect of a so-called population or a people that is progressive or whatnot uh, in order to sell your product or in order to just sell you an ID. And when you do sell that ID through that image, does that image uh, opens up uh, opportunities for imagination or does that just fix the new frontier that you may be now accepting you know and do you have to use representation as or submit representation to this imaginary other who is there to state this is acceptable this is not because mm -hmm. to some extent it never removes the power dynamics between people. And I think Claire, or Claire was showing an image of um, um, this uh, photographer and her community in Cape Town in front of this private hotel. And she used the word elitist. But I would go as far as saying uh, colonialist, you know. So this is, an Im this is a hotel that was, pro I just assume, um, that was created by white settlers for white people who are part of the ruling class in Cape Town. And do and does an image uh, who shows queer people in front of a symbol of uh, success, as we understand it in capitalist society, uh, disturb or distract or d just enables something? Or does that just show that? the ideals of success are still the same. And now just showing a proximity to these symbols is uh, is a progressive representation. To me, not really. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that kind of goes back to also where does that get represented to, you know, this representation of a representation and and when this gets shown, you know, the spectatorship behind it too, the the, the kind of images and the narratives that it presents in a way that is problematic, very much problematic, you know, and this is why I was giving the example of like museum and spaces, art spaces specifically, or so some of them to showcase those representations, to show a certain uh, idea of, you know, the, of progress of like, a, no, sorry, not prog being progressive, sorry, or at least showing, I mean, you're very much familiar with that probably, this idea of diversity, this idea of kind of like a, it allows them to create a certain, you know, narratives of, yeah, of progress, as I said. So, yes, I totally hear you here. Um, and this is how do we actually come out of that, you know, this idea of, yeah, of that representation too. How do you come out of this? How do you, through a practice, your practice, um, but also your kind of critical views on it, you know, um, kind of speaking up around it or whatever shape it takes, actually would show an alternative vision of that or create different, you know, tools and system to, to come out of that too. Um, it's a huge beast, but yeah, I think it's such an important conversation, especially in terms of, 
and being in conversation with people that are making and producing every day and how do we kind of all work towards this idea of shifting that you know um yeah in, in everyday practices as well um so yeah yes definitely thank you i think maybe also something that i was just thinking about or that i've been thinking about a lot outside of this too is about yeah those like the, the like construction of images and like if if there can be like a a, a liberatory future in them if we can like imagine um a way to to like to to, to, to use uh, images and to use like uh the 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 technology of like surveillance which i guess is like cameras and videos and stuff at, in like a laboratory framework which i think you know something that people have especially if we're thinking about like you know in like post-colonial countries like i think that's that's something that people are thinking about but i don't yeah i i don't know what the um yeah people much smarter than me i'm sure have like grappled with it in ways more um succinctly than i have but like it's definitely something i've been thinking about of this yeah how can how can those things which are like built as like technologies of like capture and like how can they be used in a like liberatory way mm. i guess yeah no, totally do you have like an example for um of, of that of like how yeah how that could be like not not how that could be like uh done but like maybe of things that you have observed that relates to that uh idea i mean it's a very strong idea yeah i guess like um well okay so there's an artwork actually that i saw um in um marrakesh a couple of years ago um and it's is this artwork it's like it's, so I, I think it kind of goes back to this like tina tina camp thing mm -hmm. of like of like cutouts and it's like this it's like a it's a photo and it's like a colonial image and everyone has been like covered over in like gold mm -hmm. and it's like this thing of like um that's like a that that is like a uh a, a technique or something to, to 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 change this image but how do you change like the creation of that image you know like these images still exist and still you know images are still used for for surveillance and to 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 make sure that like to to reinforce the um the like ideology of the state you know um yeah, yeah. So i think it's that thing of like how to or how to use images responsibly for something yes absolutely yeah that actually make me think of an example that um that camp also gave you know in relation to what you're saying of um and that also kind of rejoined that question of how do we subvert like narrative of you know of yourself you know in the future and i'm going to share like very quickly my screen again um i'm aware people want to to talk as well but i just thought it's ah it's here there's um for example in in camp's uh book where she um, shared that project, uh, which kind of started from a uh, Twitter account, which was called, if they gun me down, which picture would they use? And where people were kind of, where people, I mean, African-Americans, uh, young people specifically, were kind of portraying themselves. It started like this blog from this uh, Twitter account where they were taking over um, I guess anticipating because of like the, the the level of dispossession, the level of of what's happening in the U.S. And I'm not projecting that with a detachment from here at all, but it's just because this project was set there. But how they were kind of taking over the future narrative as well of um, themselves. What which image would would be used? You know, if I were to be a victim of a premature death, for example. So how does that kind of like future gets um, shifted in a way. Sorry, this is a pretty dark um, example. <laughs> but yes, if they were to, yeah, to, to die from premature death, you know, from the nation state, from uh, police brutality, from the actual system in the US, which image would be used in order to, in order to represent that? Um, but yeah, it, it kind of relates a little bit to what you said, Miriam. It just made me think of that. Um, 
but yeah once again it's just a, this question of also temporality within images and 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 which how much agency do we have you know on those images that are produced by the state but also images that will be and you know that we can anticipate that will be used by the state as well you know um you know which one the one on the right or the one on the left you know um about each um individuals so yeah this one was very strong i mean this this example with the uh, will forever stay in my mind i think um as well but yeah i just wanted to share that um and uh i think elu wanted to say something and then teresa yes it's um it's interesting my mind immediately went to surveillance as well in this idea of sorry i'm on a main road as well all the problems nice. um but when i think of say like future future and imagination i think a lot about the question of privacy mm -hmm. um because of how ubiquitous images are Absolutely. and i mean as an image maker i think this question of accountability has has almost been lost a little bit um because i, I feel sometimes when you're pointing your camera at something when you're making something you're also pointing towards what's not in frame and i think the kind of the there's something almost that's been lost and what's left out and i, I wonder whether this question of kind of is is there a way of kind of sidestepping um or like asking the question in a slightly different way and and the other side of it also relates to this question of privacy because there are so many images that are meaningful although they don't exist in a space that they're kind of um, recognized by other people mm -hmm. and we're in a phase where being recognized by other people is kind of the thing that makes you exist or makes you feel like you exist or and it's we're you know in a space of reckoning and in kind of um, thinking about reframing so many images and understandings of, of moments and histories and so there's a necessity to be visible but there's also a, a kind of that necessitates a kind of re-engaging with trauma and it also within a space that's also still not actually receptive to um, questions being understood or people being understood on their own terms. Um, so just, I mean, as a kind of small example, which is both related to film and photography, for, as a producer, there is one project that I didn't take forwards because it was proving too traumatic to the people involved in that project but what we did do is ensured that everything relating to it was was digitized um, and you know archived in a way that was meaningful kind of um, enabled a kind of future referencing of that work or those images but that archive isn't public at the moment because the public space necessitates it to be in someone's property that that would be problematic and it necessitates a kind of i suppose an acknowledgement from a wider space that isn't yet there i hope that's not too vague i can't, can't talk too much about that specific um project but i hope it's clear yes, enough no, thank you thanks Helen. um and yeah i want to just uh, share um, an example of kind of listening to everybody so far and um, as, as we have visited South Africa there is this um, incredible um, artist photographer Zetin Bilem Cezanne and um, and just like this image I think is incredible <laughs> like it's quite an embodiment of what we've spoken about yeah. can you see um, this one yeah just like her embodiment of uh, like taking the space and like in this direct uh, like what when this event of taking down the the statue of Cecil Rhodes and then her embodiment of this I have to read um, Chapungu the great Zimbabwe bird and like I just I just find it um, incredibly powerful and then even talking about like so many of you have us have mentioned the new technologies and like here like what which one is the performance and and just kind of like the yeah the, the confidence and the i i find it very moving and very very powerful so i wanted to bring that into the space no that's really good but also the commitment as well because she stayed it for hours in which yes. you put the message out um, 
yeah no, that's a really good example and there's the whole and then when everyone left and she would just keep yes. being on heels and like it was physical 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 performance. yeah absolutely so i mean absolutely. kind of going that she also came to my mind when you said how do we like what is this imagination how do we imagine like photography uh is is photography even um can it be not images like can it be something and he, i think that yeah it's just kind of came straight into my imagine straight into my consciousness because it 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 works on all these levels um yes absolutely so. thank you so much that's perfect um yeah i mean there's there's so many different questions that comes out of a, a practice you know whether it's the kind of colonial monuments, but also, you know, the, the durational performance of putting her body, you know, as a black woman in the context of, you know, South Africa, et cetera, et cetera. It's like a multi-layered um, distribution. Hi, Gemma. Sorry, I'm late. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's recorded so you, you can catch up as well later but this is kind of like the more like the activity part of the the workshop yeah where we're kind of thinking of like methodologies and tools and um of how to kind of yeah reimagine photography um I'm, I'm kind of giving like a super brief uh explanation now but a bit of context i just wanted to use, um it's a maybe a smaller comment, but um, I really appreciated reading Azule's work, and um, it was really powerful and how we should. Um, we should consider like the framing of agency mm -hmm. when we see um you know photographs of people in conflict and you know in war and things like that and, well one other idea in terms of a potential reframing and it just also um made me think of another type of reframing so um it made me think about actually um the concept of sort of like the social model of disability which I, I is something that i like take with me and it's sort of like that people aren't disabled in themselves they're disabled by the conditions that they encounter in society so trying to reframe you know um people might be disabled by like the lack of um entry to like a specific um building or or road or something like that and sort of trying to like um think about like where the agency lies in in that type of um in that type of relation but it, um the sort of other framing i was thinking of is like when we see the increasing images of like climate emergency and disaster like how can we reframe our um view on like who has agency and like who is like culpable uh, um for those images like i don't know it was just it was just like an associative thought that i had um uh, mm -hmm. yeah thank you can you give like an example just to kind of see um where you're going with this intersection as well um, well, I, I guess, you know, when we see, like, the things like forest fires, like, you know, um, you see these horrific images, but actually, um, you know, and, and maybe it can be like a type of, like, sympathy or like a type of, like, uh, pain that you identify with, um, like, either for the um, you know people or animals or nature you know that is being like destroyed in that way um, but I hadn't really thought of like connecting that to like polluters to um, you know industrial activity and like how those can be 
um, images that in a way necessitate like political formation. Like I think Azule is arguing, you know, um, like actually these images of conflict and violence, like they should make us take action in whatever way we can, like against the regimes that are causing these, um, you know, these conflicts, like, uh, and that are like playing out this violence on people. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if there's like a transformative way that we can reframe like, um, yeah, like, climate emergency to like the actual like perpetrators of yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is super key. And yes, it is super central to what Azule says, you know, very much in going back to, you know, this political imagination of how to do that within the nation state, as well as having our own agency of taking over this narrative, you know, in that context. Um, yeah, how to kind of divert that um, in a way. Um, is the big question, definitely. Yeah, thank you, uh, Yvon. Hi. Hey. Yeah, do you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, sorry, I, I just had a few um, uh, sort of uh, oh. everything. I found that very interesting, but just wanted to point out, I was, uh, interested in this idea of thinking about photography um, uh, in you know this now versus the future perspective, you know this kind of relationship. But um, I, I think one way I, I, I like to understand what photography mm. is is uh, is um, I would say ex expanding its boundary. In itself, which in a way, um, um, uh, how can I say, say it? Which in a way addresses what it is in its essence. You know, you know what photography is. Um, it's, it's more of a, a more of a theoretical way of, of understanding it. I believe that it's hard for me to uh, talk about photography um, uh, in a singular way. I don't, I don't think there is one thing called photography and it, I don't think it's a unique thing. I think they are photographies and that uh, these plurality of uh, uses of the usages won't actually um, uh, frame or, or define what this essence is. So that, that's one thing. And I think that this plur plurality of photography um, uh, is a is a way to actually uh, lead us towards this um, uh, non-image making. I don't I don't know how you 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 framed it. You said uh, uh, is is there a way to think about photography out of image making? Yes. Yeah. Because because when you look, I think at uh, the way photography has existed. Uh, in different forms, I would say the, the way photography has crystallized in different need, I mean, uh, usages in history, you know, between anthropometric photography, ethnographic mm -hmm. photography, artistic photography, and all, all, the, all these various forms that are not necessarily artistic, you know, um, it, it sort of crafted um, a very a large understanding of what photography is, and um, which, to me, in my opinion, um, addresses uh, something more deep. I would say about uh, I think that's what she uses, regime-made image. Um, I have a uh, Marxist understanding of what uh, all of this is about, because I believe that um, um, the very uh, the photograph itself, you know, the, the camera, sorry, the camera itself as a tool has already a sort of consciousness based on the fact that it is a tool, you know, a technological object, you know, these kind of things. And I think it brings 
um, the camera brings a, a already a way, shapes already a way of looking at the world. And I think that's a way also to, to talk about, uh, about, about these things. So it would be about maybe broadening somehow the um, the the frame, like as as a symbol, right? Of course, but um, sort of thinking out of the box, right? Saying, okay, it's not just mm -hmm. about photograph itself, but um, photo photography, and I would say maybe the photo photographies with regards to all the other um, um, domains of knowledge and reality production. You know, these kind of things. Um, you know. What is photography contemporary with? What is, for instance, the regime of of of, of knowledge, of thinking, of theory? Um, um, how is the economy at in in, in sort of an uh, addressing photo photography um, uh, out of making? I would suggest I think that the one way would be rethinking the frame. I think um, I think it's. Um, I don't know, that's Teresa mentioned at some point, uh, or Elhum, I don't remember, I'm sorry. Um, the, the idea of this edge, you know, the edge of, of sight, like actually the idea that when you take a photograph, you really frame something, but at the same time, you are um, um, erasing something else. You know, this idea of selecting reality, and then at the same time, it's a simultaneous act. And, um, in this, conf this, I wouldn't say conflict, but in this contrast, the contrast of the image you create and the image you do not actually see because you create one, you know, that idea, that funny contrast, I think that is one way we can also address it. And another one, I would say, in my opinion, would be uh, to, to think about everything that exists as a trope, you know, within the image itself. Um, because, and I, and I also was mentioning after you, because Mohamed Ruisa, I, I actually share that idea that with, you know, this funny connection that exists between the, the way brands use um, images to convey um, their values. But that, this, is, this is what I call tropes. Um, um, why am I mentioning this connection? I think it's because I believe that um, the, the way branding and um, at some point citizenship um, overlap somewhere. It's an intuition somehow also based on what I understood from what uh, um, um, Oli, Oli, Azule mentioned, this idea of citizenship mm -hmm. being in a way, you know, a byproduct of capitalism at some point. You know, the idea that maybe the, even the concept of citizenship can be understood as something that is um, a constructively exists because um, it differentiates, you know, in a kind of um, delusion way of understanding this, you know, like it's, it differs, differentiates between the citizen and what is not the citizen and created this um, uh, reorganization and reorganization of society, right? So the, the, it be behind this idea of citizenship, there is also something of that uh, uh, regime-led construction or uh, regime violence, which in a way, because they are um, um, just a continuity of this uh, materialistic, capitalistic, um, uh, organization of society are very close finally you know um, you know d d d I think there is something common there and as, as I said it's, it's 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 an intuition I'm still thinking about it but I just feel like um, it is something at some point we should, we should address understanding the IT citizenship not as a as a as a as an ideal as a value but more in a kind of critical um, 
like mm -hmm. a critical perspective. Yeah, you have uh, you have mentioned mentions so many different themes. <laughs> um, it's a bit of points, so just like I was rambling a bit. Sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. There's just a lot of different interesting things that we can literally spend a long time on each of them, and I'm just thinking maybe to pick one is to rethink about. Um, yeah, how, how how to kind of represent and how to kind of work around photography without calling it like this. So as I said earlier as well, um, how does like image kind of, yeah, live outside of that category or how do we even kind of reformulate that and in relation to what is represented, in relation to where it will be kind of acknowledged in the future as well. So it's it's with thinking about photography, not necessarily with the device itself either. And, and as Ule talks about that too, it's not necessarily to have this fixed idea of photography is what you capture with the image and with the, the actual camera, et cetera. It's, she also mentioned that it's, it's something that was there before that, you know, that's, you know, the, 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 yeah, the creation of the, of the camera itself was not the start of photography, but before in this kind of, coming together and creating the events, which he also calls the event of photography, was very much already the start of this collective agency of creating, um, yeah, event of creating uh, narratives or creating representations, etc. So it's just kind of, I mean, this is very much a perspective, but I'm, I'm just kind of, that has completely blew my mind. I was just thinking, what does that actually mean, you know, um, <laughs> in, 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 in reality, but it's just, um, yeah, it's, it's maybe kind of a need to focus on what is those future representation that we want to make in relation to all of that. What is the, yeah, the different like tool that is um, needed for that as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my take on it as well. I don't know if anyone wanted to, to, to reply and to, to um, uh, Miriam. Sorry, I didn't see you. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, I guess I also was just thinking about like what Elfin was saying as well about like privacy and like about what you like don't show and what you decide not to show and like wondering if like the opposite to not showing is like the flooding of images that like when images are so um, come at you so like in such a like deluge that you can't even like comprehend them if like that is the opposite of like privacy if like the circulation of images being um so like uh every day or like commonplace that like you don't even like see what is in the mm -hmm. image and you mean like a like a non-visible uh representation or sorry um I don't know if you had an example um, well, about that. I don't have like a, a really concrete example, but I guess I'm just thinking of like um, the things that like, that like the, if we're thinking about like digital images, that like the, the internet is like so, so vast that like, can you really take in everything? Can you really see it? That like things become yeah, invisibilized yeah. because there's like so much of it. Yeah. Gemma, I can see you uh, nodding a lot. I don't know no, if you wanted to add something. <laughs> thinking, well, as everyone was talking, I hadn't actually thought about sharing this, but as everyone was talking, it was reminding me of a film that I watched, like, mm. um, on the weekend. And there's a scene in it, which is, like, so directly related to this conversation that it's weird that I only just thought about it now. But um, um, basically, it's this film by John Abraham called Amma Ariane, and it's about, like, um, Anaxolite, um who like he, he's basically tracing the journey of like a man's political like awakening and there's this one scene where he's gone to someone's house and in one room there's like a group of people like having a palm reading and like talking about ritual and superstition and religion mm -hmm. and then in another room there's a man like leafing through a time magazine and looking at pictures of like vietnam and like um like all these napalm pictures basically mm. right and um and just really like in that moment like there were just there's just so many readings of what that is like it, what that's saying about that image and what you should be watching and feeling and 
And I guess I was thinking actually about what Miriam was just saying in terms of um, what it, yeah, like what is in, like how are you supposed to, like, what was that film saying about how you're supposed to look at that image? Are you supposed to look at that image as away from like this idea of superstition mm -hmm. and magic and hope and ritual? Is that like this serious image that you must look at? Or is it saying, or is it making a, a distinction between um, like the, the sort of, the things that are outside of um, ritual and religion and um, that have led to the conditions of, of that image that he's looking at, right? Like what, what is it that you're supposed to see? And then, and just really thinking about also, like can you ever have like, a devotional experience um, with an image like can you ever really see the pain of that image or do you just see the atrocity of like and I know this is like something that lots of people that we have read are talking about this but it just seemed in that moment that that was really um, articulated is that there's like a didactism to viewing those images that we've learned and which relates to what Miriam is saying about like, do you ever really see anything if if it's kind of, yeah. Exactly, yeah, 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 no, absolutely, yes. Um, any responses? <laughs> no. Yes. I. It's not right directly with what Gemma just said, but kind of over like the, the conversation about what I was really taken by uh, with the Tina Kemp um, piece uh, was this idea of into like viewing images or experiencing images through intimacy and for, and like anything through intimacy really and like I was really struck by that um, I think it was in the in the in, in the in the in, in the podcast, that moment, like what ha what would happen if you when you call nine one one, they call your neighbor, and and uh, in in a way it does there it can con also be translated to what Gemma just said, but like that 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 intimacy of you and as a viewer with the image and like how you and your you are your own history and like all that you are translates into the reading of. Um, of what you're seeing, but also what you're perceiving, and and then yeah, what Miriam was saying before that, like with with the age of the internet, and um, and like this is purely for from a perspective from a personal perspective as as a photographer who uses analog, um, and really um, it has a completely different experience of actually materializing the image from from yeah from like seeing it into becoming an object, and that object then is experience in a different way and can travel even to the person who has been photographed as a, as a gift or as a as an offering or as a you know whatever um that yeah how that is that comes a full circle and how that is also um yeah i, I was like how, that that's uh, like how what does actually sense mean like what what do the senses mean in experiences in in more general not just with photography but yeah just with um cultural um like intake on like absorption almost yeah so just some thoughts as well yeah no, thank you um Ellen has shared a, a little text as well um just going to read quickly also the notion of how attention is the new commodity not the same relationship to time as it began with although photography is always the freezing of a moment and has an automatic relationship to time. Um, Elam, I don't know if you wanted to expand on that, maybe if you had the uh, opportunity. Yeah, I was just thinking about the kind of how photography started and, you know, the kind of maybe building on this kind of idea of, um, we're just thinking about how now it sits in a space of technology um, and how our relationship to photography, how we consume in inverted commas, I guess, um, is so much mediated by screens. Um, but, but coming back to the kind of idea of photography is like, and maybe speaking again about placing a frame, it's about freezing a moment. And it's a very strange thing, depending on what it is that's been frozen. It can be that you're looking at something 
in the present that's referencing a past that, you know, as that photograph's being taken, the past is not, um, that person doesn't necessarily know what's going to happen, but you do because of your relationship to how you're engaging with the photograph. And so just in this idea of future, how, how do you build for the future? What's a photography of the future? I, I think both what was the photography of the past, but also when you know you have a, when you're looking, you have a particular um, vantage point, mm -hmm. which brings with it all sorts of things. And I suppose I've thought a lot recently, or I've been thinking a lot recently about everything, like, what are the knowledge like what are the knowledge bridges that we need to ensure are in place because there's all sorts of things that are erased it's not just the photographs that don't exist but it's the narratives all around their non-existence and mm -hmm. there are lo lots of layers i guess um, yeah. Yes, absolutely. How actually, the, yeah, what is actually not captured as well. This is also like a, a point to be like considered in terms of this idea of future and photography, et cetera, et cetera, but just what is not actually captured to this day and what is, yeah, not kind of present in the landscape of, yeah, I guess like well, realities. Yeah, and to some extent, all image making is also an act of erasure because you have to be selective. So it goes back to what Miriam was saying, there's so much, but mm -hmm. you know, if you're producing, whatever you're producing, you're still selecting whether you're kind of sharing one image on your Instagram or whether you're creating a kind of body of work to be exhibited in a museum or you're making a fam family album. Mm -hmm. You're still taking a range and making a selection. So you're choosing on some sort of basis. Definitely. And there's always the erasure is a part of the process. It, it has to be because you can only kind of behold one. It speaks to how our memory also works. And, but I think in thinking for the future, it's also, is it, maybe that's kind of what I mean around the accountability of, of making and kind of recognizing the, the, ver the various steps of the process of making. I think the immediacy of photography today takes away something of like an accountability around, mm -hmm. you know, capturing something is one way of saying you're there or capturing something is one way of saying what you think about it or to kind of, to like, to, well, even just the word capture itself just speaks to that idea, right? But, Definitely. But that kind of bigger, um, that bigger question of, of everything that's been erased in order to enable that capture mm -hmm. is, um, I suppose, part of the, and yeah, I mean, I could go on. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, that's very relevant. And, and just to jump again on this idea of capturing also, it's kind of thinking of the people that cannot escape the, the capture too, you know, the people that are constantly on the, you know, on the, the, the objective, not the objective, sorry, that's French, um, under the camera of just, you know, like the migrant body, like the stateless, the homeless, the sex worker, the, you know, that are constantly out that can, cannot escape this realm of photography. And, you know, the space of being constantly visible, you know, whether it's the media, whether it's what we decide to, to capture, you know, every day in the streets or, or, or something else. So, yes, it's, it's um, yeah, there's so much. I mean, the, the terminology and all the words that actually talks about this medium are very much still drawn into, yeah, the knowledge that we get from it, but also like the, yeah, the colonial representation and, and framework that it gives us. So we just kind of, and, and I really love the contribution of, of today. And, but it's also a way of realizing that we're very much um, kind of like almost not stuck, but in a way kind of, um, trying to grapple something that is like so entrenched as well um, within those narratives and how we can, yeah, how does imagining like together this way and collectively and having those conversations allows to maybe step by step rethink of different representations, as we say. Um, I mean, this question of representation is so huge as well, but it's, yeah, it's that, you know, the rethinking of the in individuals um, the collective, you know, uh, on both sides of the photography and, and, and recreating those narratives differently. So, so yeah, that's a really important point as well. This idea of who can actually escape that as well. Um, 
or like subverted. Um, so there's a privilege within citizenship, but there's a privilege in the position that we take within making it, within viewing it as well. So yeah, a lot, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, a lot to process. Um, um, no mm. picture, but I would really be curious to hear from Fabian and Ade Adeolua. Um, but if you don't feel like sharing anything, uh, that's all right. Okay. We can move on to something else. <laughs> Okay, I, I can go first. Um, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a lot of things. Uh, I think, for example, when I read the, the text, I remember the, an idea, you know, that uh, in relation to Fred Moten work that says that, uh, that every image is preceded by a, by a sound, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm totally related to the idea of the sound as, as a context sometimes, you know I mean? Like, I think that, uh, for example, coming, uh, living here in the Dominican Republic, for example, is really, is really conflictive. See how uh, media, you know, like uh, hegemonic media, even if it's like liberal media, editorialize, for example, uh, the conflict inside, inside Haiti, you know? I mean, like, uh, it's like all the time, like naturalize this narrative of the crisis, naturalize the narrative of the calamitosity, you know? And, even if they are like uh, the, the Haitian social movements, for example, are really uh, avant-garde, you know, in the political sense, you know, all the time, you know, like the, the, the media and the journalism are going to reproduce it only as, a, as part of the disaster. You feel me? I mean, like the, the social movement as a part of, of a disaster and a calamitosity. And when I think about this is, uh, for example, about this idea, for example, of the, of the, of the landscape. Mm -hmm. concrete, concrete in the Caribbean, how the idea of the of the Caribbean is totally reduced as a landscape, you know, and and the problem is how the landscape, you know, is built on erasure, you know, it built it built it totally, you know, on colonial frames, you know, on, on racialized uh, struggles, you know, I mean, uh, colonial legacies, you know, like legally legacies of violence, like every day. So in fact, I think that it's, it's really important sometimes this idea, I mean, to understand that, you know, I mean, like how definitely representation is totally built on erasure. And I think uh, on the privilege of who can, uh, you know, who can be the place of the discourse and build the place of the discourse. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Sorry, I joined a little bit late. Hi. and. Uh, I didn't get to do as much preparation as I would have liked before um, we started. So I'm just like very focused on listening and I probably wouldn't say much. Uh, so, like this. No, it's good. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for being here. Then perhaps we can. Um, it's really interesting because I was just focusing on listening to all of your reflections. And one thing that comes to my mind is. How do we act you know upon all of these reflections what do we do with them um how do we take action do we shift onto using the medium of text shall we write a text all together and if we do so how do we create a collaborative methodology of writing um the initial idea with cindy was um to come up with collective fragments after this little discussion workshop and and just you know take take these reflections a bit further and and transform it onto a conversational text. But if you had any other thoughts or if you feel more comfortable with another medium, um, perhaps we can we can talk about that a little bit. And um, yeah, I think just to mention as well, the text would be uh, kind of archiving the conversation in a way in a different like ways, but it's also would be part of the If a Tree Falls in a Forest uh, publication with uh, our photography festival. So this is where it would kind of land, but this would be like one space where it would be presented, um, but how it can kind of like go beyond that too, um, or at least be shown uh, or shared, you know, in a different, different platform. Um, but yes, that this is something that I was yeah very keen to to yeah to kind of use i think um writing is something that i really um well, that i really love but that's very much part of my practice now uh, it's kind of recent <laughs> but it's there 
um, and I just thought that this is yeah just a way to kind of capture conversations um, in a in, yeah in a different way let's say um, so I don't know if people are interested but this is just a way that I would maybe reach you afterwards and and just say hey um, what kind of contribution would you like to to make to this conversation what is is there like an idea specifically that could be part of um, that could be part of this like methodologies and tools that I mentioned, you know, could this be like a, almost like a intervention, like a manifesto almost, bullet points, you know, that can come from your contributions. Um, so something very simple um, because of the idea of, yeah, collective text is, is also, uh, can be messy <laughs> in a good way, but yeah, it's like, a, how does that work? <laughs> so yeah, it just maybe like just, yeah like bullet points of like the ideas this is a workshop that took place and these are the ideas that were like brilliant and really love the contribution um i think it's important to mention that once again um but how can they be archived differently than just having also this record the recording of the workshop itself um and being in a publication and being out there and being online and shared with anyone um just to start uh, yeah a conversation around i guess uh, something as big as you know the future of photography oh gosh <laughs> um yeah that's that's my idea it's completely aligned with the whole core elements of the exhibition and this project which was offering a new tool and methodology of reading african photography nowadays how can we trace back what is going on and how can we offer our own readings and imp interpretations to it um, so this idea of writing a text collaboratively is also a way of putting our voices there. And yes, as Cindy said, it is messy. It is challenging to write together. But in that also, we can question ownership. And, you know, it can be the question of self of how can we write and why, why should one even think collectively or one should, should one create a collective gaze and is it needed? Um, maybe if you don't maybe Yvonne can say something very quickly about it or we can just do a little brainstorm it, it is said that this word shouldn't be used anymore because it's problematic but uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. you can repeat the word <laughs> if you like it um it's okay uh, Jim had just sent a link which looks pretty incredible as well. I really love the idea. Um, I've never seen something like that before um, and how people were kind of gathering different thoughts and reflections. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. Really cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's kind of nice as well to think about voice as well and like speaking out loud and because sometimes, yeah, I guess in the same way that we're talking about image like that's just like a different register of, of engaging with the so it'd be nice to think about voice as this other way of seeing an image or witnessing an image right mm -hmm. that's different from writing about it i don't know if that makes sense yeah it could be totally yes no i really love that idea um hate that um but yeah. what's that, that? sorry a WhatsApp chat, like a group chat, I guess. Mm, yes. Yeah. Um, or, so, or another platform or something. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Thank you. Seeing that just uh, reminded me, Ibrahim, of the conversation that you had with Asma. If, well, you know, I mean, you are better to speak about it, but it was a really beautiful, uh, both visual and audible and written by Nelly Fletcher. Yeah, I think uh, so just to explain briefly, but it was a project where we decided to write uh, together with a friend of mine. So in order not to limit the other and to keep the conversation going, we just wrote like yeah fragments, poems, and reflections um, that we then brought together, following a timeline that is 
sort of similar to what you shared, Gemma, and that included photographs and also voice notes. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. But then that can only exist online, right? Because if you have a, a publication, then you need to think a little bit. I wonder as well, though, if like, because also there's with this, what's really interesting is, is that even if it was printed, um, yeah, that there there is a register that you can't access, but there is also text and there is also image. And there, I don't know, there's something also kind of interesting about like something that happens in dialogue and then something that would happen with the printed and that as reflective of like some of the issues that we're talking about as well, like that not everything can be rendered um, in every context, right? So maybe if it did live online, but then in the printed version, it was just like, you can't click the links, but there is some stuff to engage with. I don't know that something was said, right? There's a record that something was said, not necessarily the transcription. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. We can have two versions. We can have an, uh, a digital version where we can um, come up with, with audios and, and, and links and a publication where, as Gemma said, can just keep a record of that. Yeah, uh, maybe I want to add something to that, what Sukina just said. About, I think actually something which is about the um, um uh, the intention of the of of the of archiving this conversation i believe uh, that's something that can be taught through and it's also the object of this conversation but maybe cindy would have um in the way you led the workshop maybe you probably have like a, uh, a direction in continuity with your original uh, idea but I, in my understanding and especially after I took a look at the link that was just shared, which is very interesting. I think I really see it as a um, multimedia um, object, uh, something that can be in, in dialogue with it, between a printed something in the tradition of a printed something and something which is online with the possibilities that are offered with the, the, on the online tools. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I am really interested in not mimicking um, the uh, organic uh, nature of a, of a conversation. Because if, if you have a spontaneous conversation on WhatsApp uh, or in, in, a, on, in a chat, there is something natural to it that uh, you would hardly sort of reproduce without being in a, in a, already in a design kind of stylistic position. Um, those, are, those are two, I think, different approaches that maybe, I'm not saying that one um, better uh, objectively, but I have my, um, my views on these. Uh, I'm just saying that we should probably just have that in mind um, while thinking of this uh, multimedia piece. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to point out. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Okay, I mean, I think, yeah, a little, lots of food for thoughts, definitely. Um, and I think I'd like to, if that's okay, to kind of go away and think about how that could be and, and be in touch about the ways of, of doing it as well. But the examples that you shared, Gemma and Ibrahim, are just really brilliant, I think. Um, yeah, they're really, really brilliant, I think. Like super innovative in a way. Innovative, not a good word, but you feel me. <laughs> you feel me. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I'm aware of time, or conscious of time. Um, I don't want to take too much, and I realize that two hours is plenty on the screen as well um but if there's any other ideas contribution uh, please share it now or you know after the workshop uh, you have my email as well as untitled email and um so can i kind of shared you know the emails um with everyone's kind of like cc'd and stuff so feel free to also email each other but also yeah just kind of creating different dialogues there um but yeah just to kind of keep people connected 
we actually with regard to surveillance and everything that we mentioned we had a conversation with cindy about how the email should have been hidden away and the and I was like no <laughs> show them so that they can just you know become friends and and collaborate i really wish um for this conversation to stay alive and i know that you know we we have the habits in this sort of gatherings to you know an attempt to stay together and to do things together and it's rare when it actually does mm. happen but now that we are not limited thanks to the digital sphere you know let's like just try who knows um but yeah as cindy mentioned you have our emails uh, we have your emails and uh, let's keep this going <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much again uh, for being here and yeah, be present and participating and and hopefully enjoying some elements of or, or everything <laughs> of that workshop. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And yeah, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Cindy, could you actually um, those questions because they were quite long when you when you post them yeah. can you uh, can you send them in 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 the follow-up email because yes uh, definitely can... yes yeah. yes yes and i can put references and everything as well yeah, yeah i realized there was a lot um but yeah yeah and actually Gemma as well if you could uh, put the film that you spoke about into the chat that would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. but yeah thank you very much everybody it's, it's been great to hours Thank you so much. And thank you, Cindy, for taking part into this program and offering this wonderful workshop. You did great. Thanks, everyone. And uh, thank you. Well, if you want to share it with friends who couldn't attend, we are going to post it on our website. It will be live um, so you can share it with anyone you want. And uh, next week, we will be having another wonderful workshop with our friend here, Fabian. Um, so if you can join, that would be great. And um, yeah, and keep following the program if you can. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next Bye. week. Yes. Bye.